Hello everyone. Today we are going to teach you how to properly set up your lesson plan for successful completion of this course. The first thing that you will want to do is open up a blank Word document. As I describe these to you verbally, I will also show you how to do everything. You are encouraged to follow along and set up your lesson plan as we go. First, we'll go to the home ribbon. Next, you will want to ensure that your font is set at Times New Roman 12. As you can see, my font is Calibri 11. So to change this, I'm going to go to this drop down arrow. Then I'm going to simply type Times New Roman, regular, make sure it says 12. And now I'm going to encourage you to select set as default. You can select OK, but if you select OK, you will have to change this multiple times during the process of us setting up your lesson plan. So I'm going to show you how to do set as default. You can choose either one though. I'm going to select this document only and OK. Now we have our font set up. The next thing that we are going to want to do is make sure that we are aligned left and make sure that our spacing is appropriate. We're going to stay in the home ribbon, but now we're going to be in the paragraph box. So let's click this drop down arrow. You want to make sure that your alignment is left, your indention is zero, and that your spacing is zero before and zero after. So I'm just going to change this from an eight to a zero and then change this from line spacing multiple to single. Now, again, you can select OK or set as default. I'm again going to choose set as default to avoid future work later. This document only, OK. Next, we're going to set up our margins. To do that, let's go to the layout ribbon. Under the layout ribbon, you'll go all the way to the left and select the drop down box for margins. You want to select custom margins. Now, you want to make sure it's set as mine is already, 0.5 for the top, 0.5 for the bottom, 1.25 for the left, and 1.25 for the right. Make sure that this is applied to the whole document. Again, you can choose OK or set as default. I'm going to choose set as default, and then I'm just going to select yes. Next, we're going to set up our endnotes. To do that, let's go to the references tab. Once you're in the references tab, find the footnotes box and select that drop down arrow. You want to make sure that you have EndNote selected, so then it moves to End of Document. Then you want to make sure for number format that you change this to 1, 2, 3. Make sure your numbering is continuous. Apply changes to whole document. Now, this is very important. You do not want to hit Insert. Instead, you want to hit Apply. If you hit Insert, you're going to have to do this multiple times. Instead, we want to hit apply. If you already have your ruler showing like mine is here, you can avoid this next step. If your ruler is not showing, what you're going to want to do is go to the view ribbon and then go to the show box and then just make sure that the ruler is checkmarked. Now that everyone has their ruler, let's go ahead and set up our header and our footer. The easiest way to do this is to go to the top of your document and using the left side of your mouse, double click. If yours worked, you will have a gray line that appears and then the word header, like so. If yours did not work, I'll show you another way to get to your header. To do that, you will want to go to the insert ribbon and then go all the way over to header, drop down, and then you can just select that top one. You only need to do that if the first option did not work. All right, so now everyone should have their header box opened. What we're going to do now is go back to our home ribbon and we're going to select 14. This is the only time in your entire document that your font will be something other than 12. The rest of your document should all be in 12. We also want to make sure that this is bolded. You can do this one of two ways. You can simply go under the home ribbon, go to the font section and left click bold, or if you're more of a keyboard person, you can select control B. Now, what I want you to do is write your header here, not the word header, but whatever your presentation title is. 
This is something that you should have written together during the ISD block. For our purposes, I'm just going to write the word example template, so that is going to be my header. Now, after you have written your header, you want to make sure that you hit enter. This will give you a blank line up under your title. The reason we are doing this is to save you some time as you are working on the rest of your document, so that way you do not have to go up and add a space on each page so that your information does not touch your header line. If you go ahead and do this step now, you will thank yourself later for it. Now, before we jump out of the header box, we've got one more thing we need to do. Let's come up and put our cursor in front of our title. And then I want you to make sure that you are still in the home ribbon. Go over to the paragraph box and then you'll see this tab that looks like a window pane. I want you to drop that box down and select bottom border. It should be your first option. Once you've got that done, congratulations, your header is complete. Now what we're going to do is just scroll down to our footer because we want to go ahead and set up our footer now. So click inside your footer, then go to the insert tab. Then I want you to go over to page numbers. This should be in the header and footer section. Go to format page numbers. This box should appear. And then I want you to make sure that your number format is like so. And then start at one and then select OK. Now then going back to the number box, I want you to select bottom of page and then plain number one. Now, if you did not set as default Times New Roman 12, you're going to have to go ahead and change your font again here. As you can see, mine is Times New Roman 12 because I set it as default. So this is one of those times that you would have to change it if you did not set as default. If you did set as default, then yours should already be correct. Now make sure that your cursor is in front of your number, and then I want you to type the word instructor. We are typing the word instructor here because what we are working on now is the instructor version of your lesson plan. You may also choose to do a student version of your lesson plan. All you need to do to fix this footer is erase the word instructor and replace it with the word student. All right, now let's highlight instructor and our number, and then you can do this one of two ways. You can select italicize, or if you are a keyboard person, you can just hit control I. That will italicize the whole item for us. Now you want to put your cursor in front of your number. And then using your space bar, move the number all the way to the end of the line. If you go to the next line, then just backspace it a few times so that it's on the line that we are currently on. So I'm moving mine with the space bar. I went over a few too many times, so I'm going to backspace until I'm on the appropriate line. Now I'm on the right line. Now once you are at the very end of that line, but not over to the next line, what I want you to do is backspace four times. One, two, three, four. The reason we are backspacing four times is because we need to make sure that whenever we get into the double digits that our number does not go onto the next line because that would be improper formatting. So what we are doing is working ahead to avoid that problem. Now, I want you to take your cursor and put it in front of the word instructor Go back up to that home ribbon, go to the paragraph box, look for that window pane again, select the drop down box, and this time you're going to select top border. So if yours looks like mine does, congratulations, you did it right. Now, to get out of this, let's go ahead and double click in the middle of our document. You can do so with the left side of your mouse. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and set up our academic checklist. The first thing that we need to do to set up our academic checklist is go to our ruler bar. Now you'll see this hourglass is there. I'm going to explain to you the parts of this hourglass. The top of the hourglass controls the very front of your line. The bottom of your hourglass controls the back part of your line. And then the box that the hourglass sits on controls the entirety of your line. So what we want to do is use this box and drag it over 
to the two. So you'll see that the two is completely covered up by my hourglass. Now I want you to take the top of the hourglass and drag it over to the zero. What you can do now is type the word title, colon, and then tab one time. Now I want you to enter the title of your lesson plan. Remember this should match the title in your header. So mine again is going to say example template. Now, the reason why we are using the ruler bar instead of tabs is because the ruler bar will save you an exponential amount of time as you are correcting and updating your lesson plan throughout this process. If you are someone who types something and never makes an error, then tabs are probably a great thing for you to use. But if you're going to have to go back and add a comma or a word or a few words or a few sentences or anything like that, you definitely want to use the ruler bar. The vast majority of students end up needing to make a lot of changes while they are working on their lesson plan. So I'm going to show you how to use the ruler bar because I want to help save you the most amount of your time. And this is the most efficient way to set up your lesson plan. Now, you can just hit enter twice. One, two. If you look at your ruler bar, you'll notice that your formatting on your ruler bar is still set up correctly. So we don't need to do that again right now. Next, what you're going to want to write is the word lesson and purpose. Tab once. Now your lesson purpose is going to be a brief statement of the instructor's mission about the topic. This should be something that you have written together in your ISD block. So let's go ahead and type out your lesson purpose. Once you've got your lesson purpose written, hit enter twice, one, two. Now you're going to write the words training objectives with a colon tab once, and now everyone is going to write the following sentence. At the end of this block of instruction, the participant will be able to achieve the following objectives in accordance with information presented during the instructional period, and then end that with a colon. Then you'll want to hit enter twice, one, two. Now what I want you to do is at the ruler bar, take the bottom box and drag the bottom over to 2.5 and then take the top of your hourglass and move it onto the two inch mark. Now we're going to write our training objectives out. Again, this should be something that you wrote together during your ISD block. So one period, enter, and then whatever your first training objective was. I'm just going to write training objective one for simplicity's sake. Then you'll hit enter twice, two period, training objective two. Now it's important for me to go ahead and mention some of you might have an autocorrect button that is popping up and autocorrecting your formatting. If you are having that, I encourage you to select the drop down box that is beside the electricity bolt that pops up and select stop auto correcting or stop auto formatting. If you have any problems with this, just raise your hand and get your instructor's attention and they will assist you with ensuring that your document does not continue to auto correct. If it does continue to auto correct, it is going to mess up your formatting throughout the setup process. So you want to make sure that that is cut off if it is on. Now you're going to want to hit enter twice again, three period, and write your third training objective. Now I'm only going to write three here as an example since it's just required for you to have three. If you have more than three, that is perfectly fine. But for the sake of time, we're just only going to cover the three that are required. Now I want you to hit enter twice again. Now take the box that your hourglass is sitting on, move it back to the two inch mark, take the top of your hourglass and move it all the way over to zero again. Now everyone is going to write the word hours and a colon, tab once. Now for the purposes of this course, everyone is going to write out 70, put the numeric 70 in parentheses and then write the word minutes. 
when it comes to you writing lesson plans in the future, if the course is two hours or more, the time frame would be written in hours. So for example, two and then in parentheses the number two hours. If your lesson plan is less than two hours, you would write it in minutes like we have here. Now you're going to want to hit enter twice. One, two. Then you're going to write instructional method colon tab once. Now your instructional method could be lecture, demonstration, practical exercise, and or discussion. It could also be all four of those. For the purposes of this class, everyone will at least have lecture. Now you may also have practical exercise and demonstration. If you do, that is perfectly fine. The way you would put those on your academic checklist is just separate them with a comma like I've done so here. Now you might not know at this point if you plan to use a practical exercise or a demonstration. If you don't know yet, that is perfectly fine. That's something that you'll figure out as you're writing your lesson plan. So just remember if you decide to add a practical exercise or a demonstration just to update your instructional method here. Now we're going to hit enter twice, one, two. Now you're going to write the words testing and requirement, colon, tab once. This would include a pretest, a post-test, or any type of graded practical exercise. If you do not plan on testing your students, you can simply write the word none. I'm going to just write the word none for simplicity's sake here. But again, you could write pretest, post-test, or any type of graded assignment. Hit enter twice, one, two. And now you're going to write materials required colon, tab over once. This is going to be a list of items that the students need to bring with them to class. So anything that they need, but you are not providing to them. This could be pens, pencils, notebook paper, a student computer, anything that they need to have with them to successfully complete the course. Now you're going to hit enter twice, one, two, and you're going to write the words training and aids, colon, tab over once. Now this list is going to include anything that is required for a successful completion of your course. Remember, it is required for you to have a minimum of three different types of training aids and at least 10 total training aids to successfully complete the course. If you do not have at least three different types of training aids, and at least 10 total training aids, you will not successfully pass this course. I'm going to ensure that our list includes at least three different types of training aids and also at least 10 different training aids so that way you have an example of what you could do to successfully pass this course. The first one that I'm going to go ahead and list is PowerPoint presentation. Now this is going to be the PowerPoint that I would actually show to my class. Now say for example that my PowerPoint presentation is 30 slides, then that would be 30 different training aids, but for the purposes of this class you can only count seven of them. So the PowerPoint presentation, as long as you have at least seven slides, can count for seven of your training aids. But remember that's only one type of training aid, so we have to have more types than just that. Now we'll hit tab once. The next thing that we are planning to use for this presentation be an expo board slash markers. Now this would be a different type of training aid than your PowerPoint presentation. However, the expo board and markers go together. That's not two different types of training aids. They all go together. So right now we have eight different training aids and two types of training aids. Next, we're gonna have several handouts. Now I need to adjust my ruler bar because I'm going to have many handouts. If you only have two handouts, you won't need to do this step. But if you are going to have several handouts, then you will want to go ahead and do this step. So I'm just going to take the bottom of my box and move it to two and a half. Take the top of my hourglass and put it on the two. I'm going to backspace one time the word handouts. And then I'm just going to start writing my handouts. 
So you're going to want to list the title of your handouts here. Please do not write handout one, handout two, handout three. This will not be helpful to any instructors who teach this class in the future. Remember your lesson plan is supposed to be written so that a substitute instructor could teach it the same way that you would. So our first handout is going to be called easy as ABC. I'm going to add a comma there to separate my handouts. My next handout is going to be called developer and date. My third handout is going to be a business card. My fourth handout is going to be my PowerPoint slides. So basically that will just be a handout to the students of my PowerPoint presentation, but in paper form so that they can make notes on it. Now you'll notice that because I have so many handouts here, they went over to the next line and it indented one space. The reason why we're doing this is because it makes it so much easier for future instructors to find out exactly where they're supposed to be. It also is just more organized. So that's the way, so that's the reason why we are indenting this is to make it easier for our instructors to make sure they have all the necessary items. Now, if you have seen some older lesson plans, you might have noticed that videos, podcasts, things like that were listed under training aids. With Turabian updating, now Turabian says that those should be listed in the references. So we are not going to list those as training aids anymore. Please make sure that if you plan on bringing anything into the class that isn't your standard training aid, that you make sure that this is okay with your school director before you actually do that. Now we are going to hit enter twice, one, two, and then I want you to adjust your ruler bar. So to do that, we are going to move the bottom box to two and the top of our hourglass over to zero. Next, you're going to write the word references colon and tab over once. Now your references are going to go here. You have not written your references yet because you have not had that block of instruction yet. However, whenever you do have that block of instruction, you're going to want to come back to this section and write your references here. I'm going to just make sure that I save my place here and just write references go here. You might also want to put yourself a note here that your references should be in alphabetical order. So remember to put those references in alphabetical order. Next, we are going to hit enter twice and you are going to write prepared by colon, tab over once, and then you are going to write your name here. So my first and last name, then I'm going to hit enter once tab once and you are going to write whatever your professional title is so that could be patrol officer that could be probation parole officer that could be telecommunicator whatever your professional title is you want to list that here next you're going to hit enter once tab once and whatever your place of employment is now you're going to want to hit enter twice write the words date prepared colon tab over once and this is going to be the month and year that this was written if you plan on revising your lesson plan in the future you're going to want to refer back to your handout entitled developer and date that handout will show you exactly how you should format your revisions in the future. For the purposes of this class, your document won't be revised by anyone other than you, so you will not need to do a revised by or anything like that. Now we are almost done with our academic checklist. All we have left on our academic checklist is our instructor notes page. So let's go ahead and work on that. To do that, we are going to want to go to insert, go to your insert ribbon, and then page break. That will just simply take us to the next page. But the reason we did that is because you're going to go back and add your references here. And what I do not want to happen is when you add your references, it mess up the formatting on this next page. So to avoid you having to do extra work, we just put a page break in and now your life will be easier whenever you go back and add your references in. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to fix our ruler, our top of our hourglass, should be over to the two and then you're going to want to take the box that the hourglass is sitting on and move the entire thing over to zero write the word title colon space 
and then whatever the title of your lesson plan is then you're going to want to add a space hyphen space and then in bold you're going to want to write the word instructor notes hit enter twice make sure you've unbolded that and now your instructor notes is going to be a page that includes an overview of your course any special directions that the instructor teaching the class should know for example if you have a practical exercise or a demonstration the directions would go here you are actually going to learn the correct way to write those directions whenever you have your practical exercise and demonstration block in the very least you want to make sure that you list here what the qualifications must be of the person who is teaching your class so for example do you want the person to have at least five years of law enforcement experience? Do you want the person to have at least three years of being a probation officer? Do you want the person to have at least seven years of being a detention officer? Do they have to have a specific title? Do they have to have a specific education? Is there some course that they should have taken before they're able to teach your class? For example, do they have to be a certified telecommunicator before they're allowed to teach your class? Anything like that would be listed here. So to just be a placeholder, I'm just going to say qualifications of instructor go here along with directions and practical exercise instructions now you do not have to have a practical exercise or a demonstration that is not anything that is required for your final lesson plan you can certainly do so if you would like to but it's not anything that is required now that was all we had to do with our academic checklist so what we're going to want to go do now is go to the layout ribbon go to breaks and select under section breaks next page this will take us down to a, another page. Now I want you to notice that your page number here is two. And then if we scroll down, your page number should be one here. If your page numbers do not look like mine do right now, then I would strongly recommend that you raise your hand and ask your instructor for assistance. So that way we can make sure everybody's on the same page before we continue with our setup. Now, if yours does look like mine does, what we're going to go ahead and do is fix those page numbers. So go to insert, and then you are going to want to go back to your footer, double click inside that footer. If for some reason that did not work, then you can go to insert and footer, and you can adjust it then. You want to unselect link to previous, and then you want to go over to page number, format page number, and just change that from these small Roman numerals to one, two, three. Make sure it says start at one and okay. Now you'll notice that that stayed italicized, which is great. And then if you scroll up, you'll have the small Roman numerals here. Scroll down, you will have the numeric of one there. So if yours looks like mine does, congratulations, you did it correctly. Now what we are working on is the actual lesson plan. So we just finished the academic checklist and now we're working on the lesson plan. So the first thing we're going to do is want to go ahead and click out of this header and footer. Make sure that your cursor is at the very top of your line. Now you're going to write the word title, colon, space, and then whatever your title of your document is. Remember this should match what is in the header. So notice that these match exactly. Now you are going to want to hit enter twice, one, two. Now take the box that your hourglass is sitting on and move it over to the half inch. Then take the top of your hourglass and move it over to the zero. Now you are going to want to enter a capital I or Roman numeral one, tab once and write the word introduction. Now in parentheses, you're going to want to write eight minutes and then enter twice, a Roman numeral two, tab over, body, in parentheses, 54 minutes, in parentheses, enter twice, 
Roman numeral three, tab over once, conclusion, in parentheses, eight minutes. Now, these are the three main parts of your lesson plan. But we've got a lot of information to fill in in between these. So put your cursor in between your introduction and body, add a space there, and then you can do this one of two ways. You can take the box that your hourglass has been sitting on and you can drag it over to where the box will be at one inch and the top of your hourglass should be at 0.5. I'm going to show you another way to do this though that might be simpler and faster. Another way to do this is to just go up to where it says increase indent should be in the paragraph section hit that and then it moves the entire piece over for you. So you can do either one you'd like to. I prefer using this decrease and increase indent just because I think it's a little bit faster, but whichever one works for you, you're welcome to use. Now we should all be writing a period tab once and opening statement. Then enter twice, B period, tab over, training objectives, Enter twice, C period, reasons. Enter twice. Now put your cursor in between your opening statement and your training objectives. Hit enter there. And then what I want you to do is just take the top of your hourglass and move it on top of the one. Now your opening statement is going to go here in paragraph form. I'm just going to write opening statement goes here to save our spot. Make sure you hit enter after that. Your opening statement is going to introduce your subject. It should be information that includes setting up the foundation for the upcoming instruction and make sure you have an attention getter. Next, let's work on your training objectives. So put your cursor in between your B and C, add a space then scroll up to your academic checklist the easiest way to do this is to just highlight your training objectives that you wrote up there copy and then scroll back down to your lesson plan now you can just paste those in there now the formatting is not going to be correct whenever you paste them in there but that's okay we've saved ourselves time by copying and pasting so now just highlight all of those and you can use your decrease indent. Make sure that the top of your hourglass is at one and the bottom of your hourglass is at 1.5. If yours looks like mine does now, congratulations, you did it correctly. Now we are going to add our reasons. So you want to put your cursor right after your reasons, take the top of your hourglass, move it over on top of the one, and then your reasons paragraph is going to go here. Remember this section is going to be a statement that tells the students why they are paying attention in your class. It's going to include anything that should create motivation and anticipation for the instruction that is about to come. So I'm just going to write reasons go here to save your spot. Now let's go ahead and work on our body. So put your cursor in between your Roman numeral two and three, add a space, and then go to increase indent. What you're going to want to do here is a period tab and then whatever a header for objective one would be. So I'm just going to write header for objective one. Remember your headers are supposed to be a word or a phrase, not a complete sentence. Then I'm going to hit enter twice, B period. This is going to be a header for objective two. Hit enter twice, C period. And then a header for objective, for objective three. Now, once you've got that done, I want you to put your cursor in between your A header for objective one and B header for objective two. Hit enter, and then I want you to increase your indent one time. If you have an A, you have to have a B. If you have a one, you have to have a two. If you have a C, you do not have to have a D. 
If you have a three, you do not have to have a four. So we're going to make sure that we have a one and two at least. So let's go ahead and put one period tab over once. This is going to be a subheader for objective one. So now once you've got that done, let's hit enter twice, two period tab over. Then this is going to be a subheader for objective two. Now you can go on and add three, four, five, six, all the way to 130 if you would like to. But this is not something that we're going to show you how to do in this exercise for sake of time. All right, so now let's say, for example, that you have information that you want to put up under your subheader for objective one to further explain that topic. What we're going to do is hit enter, then you're going to want to increase your indent Make sure you're following the correct formatting. So it would be A, parentheses, tab over. This would be information to support your subheader for objective one. Enter twice, B, parentheses, tab over. And again, information to support subheader for objective two. Now I'm just writing this just to give you an example, but yours would actually be a paragraph of information or either a list. That's what yours would be. Remember, you can do more than just A and B. I'm just going to show you this just for sake of time. Now say you want to break down B further. Just add a line and then increase your indent and then your formatting would be parentheses one, in parentheses, tab over, information to support to support subheader b and then if you have a one you have to have a two so enter twice a two would be in parentheses and again information to support subheader b now if you only have enough information here for a one but you don't have enough information for a two then just don't add the one and then just put the information in paragraph form that's the easiest fix for that. Now hit enter once. You do not have to break your lesson plan down this far. I just wanted to show you that as an example. You can actually break it down much further than this though if you would like to. You do have to break it down into an A and a one and a two at minimum, but you do not have to break it down further like we've done here. Now, if you plan on using a similar setup the easiest thing to do here would be to copy. So control C or either copy, put your cursor in between your B and your C, and then you can paste that information there. You'll notice that it kept our formatting for us. So that'll save you some time during the setup. You can do the same thing under C and just paste that in there too. That'll save you some time with your setup as well. Now let's go ahead and go into our conclusion. Make sure you hit, hit enter. And then we need to update our ruler bar so that it is correct for now. And you want to make sure that your hourglass is set for the top being a half inch and the bottom being at one inch. Now we're going to write a period tab and you're going to write the word summary. Enter twice. B period questions from class, C period tab over, and then closing statement. Now once you've got that done, let's put our cursor in between the A and the B, add a space there, take the top of your hourglass, move it over to the one. Your summary paragraph is going to go here. This should summarize the main points that you made during your presentation. And you also want to make sure that you cover your training objectives again. So I'm just going to add a placeholder here and just say summary paragraph goes here. Now let's hit enter twice and then go up to our training objectives. We'll copy those just to save us some time. And then up under your summary paragraph, you want to paste those in. It kept my formatting. If it did not keep yours, then just highlight and make sure that those are in the correct spots. You can ask your instructor for assistance if you have any problems with that. Then up under the closing statement, we need to fix our ruler bar. So take the top of your hourglass, move it on top of the one. 
and then what you're going to do is write your closing statement here. So, you want to make sure that you leave your students with a memorable conclusion in your closing statement and make sure to always end your class on a strong, positive note. We never want our students feeling melancholy when they leave class. We want them to feel upbeat and that they've learned something that will help them be more effective with their jobs. Now, we've got our lesson plan almost complete. We just have a few things left to do and then we will be done with this. So let's add in some procedural notes next. So to do that, let's just go up to the top and we'll just add something in that everybody will need to add in. So hopefully it'll save you some time. I'm going to add a space. Now you want to make sure that you do your procedural notes in bold. So I'm just going to hit control B so that I am bolded. Then I'm going to hit caps lock because my word note needs to be in all caps. I'm going to remove the caps lock after I've typed the word note, then a colon. And I'm just going to write that the instructor should introduce themselves. All right, so my instructor note says the instructor should introduce themselves and provide a synopsis of their professional background. Now yours does not have to be that detailed. You could just say the instructor should introduce themselves. I wanted to write something a little bit longer so that I could show you about this problem and how to correct it. So we want to make sure that our instructor procedural notes are justified all the way to the left, meaning that this word professional should be all the way to the left. So to fix that, we just highlight it and then take the top of our hourglass and just move the entire thing all the way over to the left. Now you'll notice that our instructor procedural note is correct. So if you had that same problem, now you know how to fix it. Now everyone will also need to add procedural notes about their training objectives, so we'll work on that one next. I'm going to copy this just to save myself a little bit of time and I'm going to paste that here. Now you'll notice that my formatting is still there from previously. So what I'm going to do is highlight that word, take the top of my hourglass, put it on top of the one, and then I'm just going to decrease indent until it's all until the entire hourglass is over all the way over at zero. Show slide comma, quotation marks, training, training objectives period, in quotation marks. And then I'm just going to write review the training objectives with the class. Now you'll notice that my instructor procedural note went over onto the next line, but it is formatted correctly because we fixed our ruler bar. So now I'm going to copy this again and then at the end of my training objectives. I'm just going to add that same procedural note in, but I'm just going to delete this part. So I just added that to save myself some time. Ask the class if they have any questions about the training objectives. Now you might also want to say show slide questions just to make sure that you have a marker there to make sure that you do remember to ask the class if they have any questions. You can also do that if you want to do that and add a show slide questions, then it would be formatted exactly as this one is. So show slide comma, and then your title of your slide. So if it's called questions or training objectives, whatever it's called would be in quotation marks exactly like this is. So make sure you follow that formatting. So we've given you some examples of some procedural notes here. Make sure that you Ask the class if they have any questions before you move on to any objectives in the future. So say, for example, once you finish going over objective A, you should add a procedural note before you start covering objective B that just says, ask the class if they have any questions. The reason why that we are doing this is because we want to make sure that our students understand our first objective before we move on to something more complicated. and 
they get left behind because they do not understand what we covered in the first section. So that's why it's so important for you to ask them if they have any questions before you move on to your next objective. You would also want to do that in between B and C as well. So after you've finished B, before you start covering C, ask them if they have any questions. Remember to do that for every objective that you have. Now, we have finished setting up our lesson plan as far as a template goes. You're going to obviously have to add a lot of procedural notes and add a lot of information here, but at least you have a template set up for yourself. All we have left to do is just set up our notes page. So to do that, let's go to the end of our document. Then you're going to want to go to insert and page break. That's going to put us on our next line. Now, if yours carried over the ruler bar formatting, just take the box that the hourglass is sitting on, move it all the way to zero. And then I want you to go to home. This is the only time in your entire document that your alignment should not be left. It should actually be centered. So under the paragraph section, just make sure your alignment is centered. Then I want you to bold and write the word in all caps, notes. Then hit enter twice. You can change your alignment left again. Make sure you take your caps lock and your bold off. Now we're going to actually put in your in notes. So to enter our in notes, we want to make sure that we go up to our references ribbon. Then you're going to hit insert in note. Now you'll notice that takes us down to our notes page. We have a one there and then we have this line here. We are going to remove that line momentarily, but for now let's just focus on this one. What you're going to want to do is write the last name of the author or authors of the document. So for example, Clancy, comma, and I got this information from page 345. So it'll just be Clancy, comma, 345, and then a period at the end. Now, a neat trick about EndNotes is if you double click on the number, like so, it will take you back to where you got the information from. So now let's say that you got the information from subset from your subheader for objective two from a different source or maybe a different page. So we'll say insert EndNote there. And now your author was Lasada. So L-O-S-A-D-A -S -S comma. And this time it was a website. So we're gonna have to count paragraphs instead of pages. So para. You just use that abbreviation para for paragraph. And then I got this information from paragraphs 11 through 13. Make sure you put a period at the end. Then I can go over and double click on my two to move me back up. Now, everybody doesn't always work on their lesson plans exactly in order. So say, for example, you've added these in already, and then you decide to add a reference in to your reasons paragraph. Now, are you going to have to go back and update all this numbering? Well, if you were doing this in a different way than what I'm showing you now, the answer is yes, you would have to. The good thing about what we're doing now is you do not have to. So if you decide to go back in and add a reference at the beginning after you've added some references into the middle, it's perfectly fine. It will automatically adjust the numbering for you. So I'm just going to show you this now. So I've added a reference I'm going to add a reference here to the reasons, insert EndNote, and then my author this time is Devane, comma, and this was a website, so paragraphs, so paragraphs 45 through 47, period. Now, you'll notice that Devane is now my first reference, Clancy is my second reference, and Lasada is my third reference. So now that we've shown you some examples on how to do your references, let's go ahead and get rid of this line. To do that, go to the View ribbon. Then I want you to select Draft up under Views. You'll notice that your screen looks a lot different now. Should look like mine. If yours looks like mine, that's okay. You're doing it right. Next, we're going to go to References. And now I want you to select under Footnotes, Show Notes. Now your screen should look like mine. 
Go to this drop down box where it says all endnotes and select endnote separator. Then highlight that line and just delete it. Now go back up to this box and select endnote continuation separator. Highlight that line and delete it. Now your line should be gone. Go back up to the view. Under view, select print layout and it takes us back to our original document and that line is no longer there. Now this is the last step that we're going to do in this explanation video. I do not want you to do this step until you have added in all of your endnotes. So if you have not added in all of your endnotes yet, then just make sure you go back and do this at the end. The reason why I'm saying that is because you'll end up having to do it several times if you do not wait to the end and I want to make sure that we make the most of your time. So just highlight those numbers once you've got all of your references added in. Then I want you to go to the home ribbon and change that font to 12. Then I want you to go to the ruler bar while this is still highlighted and take the top of your hourglass, only the top, and move it over to the half inch. So the bottom of your hourglass and the box should remain at zero. The top should be at 0.5. Now add a space in between each of your references. Remember, this is, these would be the last steps that you would do. Now that you've got all that done, if you have not already done so, let's make sure that we save our document. I'm just going to save as, I'm just going to put it on my desktop just to save me some time and I'm going to call it example document and then save. Now mine's called example document. Now we have completely set up our lesson plan. If you need any assistance with setting up your lesson plan, please make sure that you reach out to your instructor for this class and they will be happy to assist you with setting up your formatting. Happy learning!